we talked about how do you you crack the YouTube code. And, and one of the things that I had thought about was that, uh oh, well, what if there's actually not a YouTube code to crack that you, it can't be done? Because I was thinking about like when I was doing Kickstarter with Infinite Black and things like that, that you in, in a certain sense, somebody could say that's cracking Kickstarter. OK, because we were very successful right. at it. We, we produced over like 325 products. And, you know, it, we did. but on the other hand, it wasn't just Kickstarter that we had. Like we probably had about a dozen different systems whether that is Facebook, whether that is Twitter, whether that is that was like three different intermediate pre-order systems that you had to go through even after Kickstarter. So even though the front end when you actually went there was a Kickstarter page, it wasn't exactly cracking Kickstarter. We had to put together an enormous number of systems that weren't necessarily compatible and required you know a tremendous amount of manual work on our end to to get all of these things together in order to make you know that Kickstarter happen. But that's just that's just marketing 101. You have to you have to fulfill all the channel opportunities. You yes. can't just you just can't go, oh Kickstarter. If I get that, right. then I'm going to be fine. No, yeah, well, you can't. right. Right. Well, marketing is one side of it. It's definitely one side of it because okay, you put up a Kickstarter page and then you say And you sit back and you and wait you sit back for the and cash. that's not a right thing. And that's why that's why when I'm looking at, at YouTube. You know, I, hey, let me make some YouTube videos and then I'll just sit back and I'll wait for people to show up and watch my YouTube videos. Because I have experience on Kickstarter, I know that, like, if I want anything to happen on Kickstarter, I got to drive traffic to Kickstarter. Right. And so, likewise, okay, if I make a video on YouTube, then I'm going to have to drive traffic to that video somehow and get But you're, you're driving to everyone to a, a, a massive floating uh, crap table. And, uh, YouTube does not segment. Uh, well, even though, even, I mean, even though they have these different categories, they don't show the categories the way they do on on um, on Google TV. There's no interface that says, I don't think, that says, oh, show me everything that people have clicked on comedy. You can do a search for people who have clicked comedy as their category, or entertainment, or science. But they haven't organized the YouTube interface that will let people click on science and then see, you know, Sabina Hassenfelder and, you know, all these other science channels. I don't know why they haven't done that. It's kind of silly. They already have the interface with their Google TV. So, so you know, why wouldn't they do that with YouTube? So, but my point is having an independence channel where at least you know these are people there are trying to put minimum you know 24 minute 50 minute things on there and that's the barrier to entry you can't put 10 minute webisodes up there that's that's not what it's going to that's not what you're going to get mm -hmm. anyway well, right. Yes. The, the marketing is what I was going to say. The marketing is one side, but then also like, you know, on Kickstarter, like even once you have people pledge, it's actually ridiculous that you may not actually know what items those people want and you have to send them through a third party system in order to figure out what they are actually pledging for. What do you mean? Like, they, they... Because, for instance, the, the uh, one of my main products, oh, this has magic cards in it. That has dice in it. Like, for instance, we used to do these uh, with with Infinite Black. We used to do these Elder Dice. And this is, you know, it's a Lovecraftian tome of no. And it's got dice in it for Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. And in the later campaigns, we put like 10 dice on there. So, you know, 10 different sets of dice. But if somebody pledges for three sets of dice, we wouldn't know what sets they wanted. Unless each one was a different skew. But Kickstarter is not built around skews. Uh, okay, you Indiegogo. can't load SKUs into right. Indiegogo is built around SKUs. Correct. Right, but if you're on Kickstarter, then you are not built around SKUs, and you have to send people to an independent pledge manager. You know, Backer Kit made a tremendous amount of money by saying, "I'll be your pledge manager." I see. So did Gamefound. Right. Uh, there were a bunch of different companies because the back end of Kickstarter was just so completely inadequate for anyone who was actually trying to run a business of any scale that these third party companies sprang up to be your pledge managers to handle everything that you actually needed. You know what? I, I didn't experience that because thankfully all my Kickstarters failed. But my, <laughs> all my Indiegogos succeeded. Yeah. Well, you know, but, but, you know, that, that's a ridiculous thing that you can run a Kickstarter and bring in $800,000 and have 10,000 people show up and not actually know what products they want and then have to go to a completely third party and Did set they that fix up. It? 
no, they're, they're still way behind. And so that's that why is, these other companies are- That is nuts. So at, what's happened is that these other companies that sprang up as pledge managers have now opened up a front end as the actual crowdfunding platform, which makes sense because they're like, we have all the back end infrastructure that you need. Right. So screw Kickstarter. So screw your front end Kickstarter. Come here to this. So that's diversifying crowdfunding platforms. But like, so we use, you know, all of the marketing channels like you were talking about. Then you go to Kickstarter. Then you go to uh, back end uh, pledge managers. Then there was an independent um, uh, pre order system. We use Celery because you couldn't pre order through the. <laughs> I would and fire you, if I was the board on Kickstarter. I'd oh, fire I, I, the management. I know. Well, but you have to remember. But yeah, I know they absolutely should. But remember, they're like the public benefit corporation who is you know that is not all their marketing is not promoting necessarily business kinds of things. They're promoting well historically they promote weird stuff. You no, know, no, I, I know think, that. I know. You know. You know. So that's what they promoted. Like not that anybody's going to the Kickstarter front page to find out what to back. But, you know, if you go, that's why you can't say I'm going to put this Kickstarter page. And then yeah, Kickstarter, Kickstarter traditionally had inventions and electronics and it'd be, there would be no need for uh, multiple levels of, of uh, inducements. You would just get the thing. Yeah. So you, you made this aluminum extruded thing that for your camera that will do something with your something. And you just pitched to be one of the people to get it. That was it. And you got nothing else but that thing. There was no other, uh, you know, would this get the get the special signed version? You know, or stretch goals. If we hit the stretch goal, we're going to be doing this. There was and none I, of that at the it, very beginning. It, yeah, in the very beginning. And so, yeah, what crowdfunding was outgrew that. But my, my point was, is that Sorry, there, just... you're having to run multiple systems. Yes. And, and even with me, what I'm thinking of and what I had always thought of when I was like, okay, I'm going to make some independent shows is that, well, I'm not going to be able to make money off of these the shows themselves, that I'm going to have to produce products that people who love the shows are willing to buy. And I just happened to have the experience coming out of tabletop games right. with manufacturing and stuff. But it's, that is not anything I would recommend to most people. You know, we, we try to talk straight here, you know, about what it takes to create stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of friends of mine who want to do independent films or they're doing, you know, things like that. And they're like, well, what are you trying to do, Heath? And I will try to explain, well, you know, I'm making these stuffed animals. I got action figure prototypes going on. I got board games. But, you know, if you're somebody who's like, I want to be making films, I want to make TV, I want to be behind the camera, you can, this is not anything you should be doing. <laughs> oh, no. You, you know. Um, there's some, there's some good Tubi experts out there. Welcome to the uh, ah, Shadows. My She-Hulk review. I haven't watched that one yet. I just saw it came up, but I haven't actually seen it yet. What? Um, I am leaving. No, no. <laughs> I, I saw it about 30 minutes before I, I came on here. No, no, so, it's not a problem. So, I, my... my my point was that there, this to do it, there are multiple systems. Nobody has this. Okay, hey, you're a, you're a creative. You want to create shows. Here is the system you need to plug into. We have you from A to Z, in an independent sense. You know, here is what you do, because man, you got to cobble it together yourself. And so, so if if YouTube offered a classic option, which is um, in TV. Uh, in the late night space, mm -hmm. I could sell a strip, which is a bunch of shows, mm -hmm. and the local station would um, take the ad revenue of, uh, you know, they, they would put in, you know, their car dealer, they, they have their own salespeople. Mm -hmm. And let's say there were, 12 total ad slots i would i would keep eight of them he would get four she or whatever would get four and then i would then go out and sell those slots and i would make that money mm -hmm. so if youtube said um we're going to uh uh, uh, you know, depending on, let's say, the number of commercials that you choose to add, and and you've set them up more like a TV. So you've got every you've got a sitcom, twenty two minutes. 
And every 10 minutes, there's going to be the traditional sitcom break, which is the way you should be writing it anyway, no matter what. And YouTube will take X number of those ad breaks and those, and then the producer of the show will get their ad breaks and they are responsible for selling those. They get the revenue for them. So if YouTube gave me the opportunity to sell four of those slots on my own show, and I'd, I'd produce the ads and I'd put it into a special system on YouTube that allows me to insert those ads and YouTube does their own little ad sensey ad thingy, whatever they want, then that would be brilliant. So that, again, that, that sounds good. I'm, I'm trying to keep, I don't want YouTube to turn it into another red and I, I want their life to be easy and I don't want them to do anything more but I want them to give us independent developers more options. And if, you know, if I have a series on YouTube and I can show them the ratings, which is absolutely brilliant, and I can sell these ad spaces for X amount of dollars. And if it's on uh, paid YouTube, I, I don't know what you would do. I, I've no, I can't think that far, but that's a much better way than, uh, not only is it a better way than trying to raise money at Kickstarter or whatever, but there's already uh, systems out there for it. People understand it in the broadcast business. It is an understood method. I don't have to convince people how it works. Well, the understood method is also extremely important because I sent you while you were on vacation a link because I saw some YouTube videos that were coming out. They were talking about how the algorithm is changing. And of course, I'm not big enough to have actually like experienced that, you know, for me. But I was watching these other larger YouTubers say that who were trying to. And so I was trying to understand what they were doing. And I thought they laid out. OK, the algorithm shifts. If you're actually trying to run a company and you're trying to run a business and they got employees and their stuff like that, that they have to actually understand how their revenue is coming in. Right. And when all of a sudden it changes behind the screen and you get just an e email that says, hey, we're doing more shorts now or something like that, that that's not enough. All of a sudden they're tanking because I didn't understand how like um, sponsorships worked with sponsorships oh, yeah. like but if, you know, if you're trying to say like, OK, you give me so much money and I will get you so many views. Like, and that's that's the 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 transaction that's going to occur. And then you like, no, based on my experience, I need to put your ad, your sponsorship in this video. And then all of a sudden it changes. And that one just tanks. Like they have to know something and understand something about that revenue stream. Otherwise it's never going to work. Well, and, and my solution fixes that. Yeah, um, it does. Uh, because it's real time. The inserting the sponsorship is bullshit. It's garbage. I want access to the same, uh, 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 commercial spot insertion tool that Google provides us to, you know, once you ha have more than an eight minute show, you can put N number of, of uh, commercial slots in. Right. Right. Yeah. So I want access to that for my sold ads. Yeah. Yeah. A everything that we're doing seems very hacky. It's yeah. always been very, very hacky. And YouTube has been behind in that, like, you know, the existence of Patreon, and I may not have the timeline exactly right, but, you know, sort of like the, the backer kits and the pledge manager showed up for Kickstarter. It seems like that's how, like, Patreon shows up for YouTube. It's like, hey, wait a minute. These YouTubers need some way that they can actually get money. And YouTube, you know, was not there. Now, yeah. later they add stuff in later, you know, but all of that developed outside of YouTube first.